Hi there, I'm Mr. Tastic, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to plan the year as an art teacher. So let's dive on in this episode and let's make some art. Number one is to brainstorm the themes you would like to explore. I would say stick on a timer for 30 minutes, put on some zen, cool music, whatever you want, some cafe jazz playlist, and then you're going to use that time to do a brainstorm of themes you would like to explore yourself. So like whether it's like the rainforest, the Arctic, um, uh, identity, culture, whatever it is, you're gonna spend 30 minutes just doing a brainstorm of themes. Number two is you're going to then create your scope and sequence. So what I like to do is just like, I like to get some papers, just blank paper, write the month at the top. You can do it on the computer as well. Um, and then you're going to stick in each month what curricular content standards or targets you want to meet um, in each month for each grade that you teach. Um, and then you're going to group them like ones that you think can go together in one lesson and just try to like, you know, circle them. You're like, okay, this could be one lesson, this could be one lesson. And then you're gonna try and map out what curricular standards um, or content pieces you're going to hit, competencies, whatever you call them, you hit each month so that way for each grade so that way you can ensure that you're going to meet them and finish the whole curriculum, meet all the standards that you need to meet bomb from, sorry, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. You're going to make sure that you're going to get them all. Okay, number three is think of art lessons to teach um, that will meet those curricular standards. So you could do it through individual lessons. You could do it, it through units, like a whole unit um, that will cover like, you know, maybe one unit per month that is going to cover um, each of those things. Um, hitting all your different standards. I think that's a really great way to go not only breadth, right, but in depth. So you can talk about the introduction of a of an, uh, concept or skill or theme and then go in depth doing some warm up exercises, exploration activities, more play based explorations, process over project and then do your projects at the end and that way you should do those and then your reflections and your critiques after that and through all that you should probably cover a lot of the curricular standards and then as you're going through them and as you're um, planning um, you're again going to check off them as you insert them into lesson plans to make sure that you've covered all right you want to make sure that you're accountable for that piece just in case anybody asks to see your lesson plans right sometimes districts are like pretty laissez-faire some are a little bit more like so just cover your um just make sure you're covered and then it's all good if somebody comes in and says can i see your lesson plan you're like yep and here's the standards that i'm, I'm looking for look at it matches my scope and sequence bob is your uncle all right, number three is think of lessons to teach to meet the curricular standards. Did I say that one already? Yes, I did. All right, and then number four <laughs> is to write your lesson plans. Okay, so now that you have an idea of your scope and sequence, you thought of the lessons that will meet all of that, now you're going to create your scope, uh, sorry, your lesson plans. So actually going and taking the time to write your lesson plans, what the steps will be to create it, what the mediums and materials are needed to create it, and then adding those curricular competencies, standards, content pieces, whatever you call them, into your lesson plan. And then once you put them in there, you're gonna check them off on your scope and sequence. I just like to put a teeny little check. Um, you can even just do it in like a pencil so that we can erase it and reuse your scope and sequence year after year. But I just like to put a little check to so make sure that, yep, I've inserted it, yep, it's accounted for, this one's done, you can move on, right? Um, and then number five is you're going to make sure make all your worksheets and examples. So now for all your different lesson plans, now you need to make any worksheets, examples, um, doing the actual creation of the lesson plans from start to finish. Oh yeah, I know it's a lot of work. I get it. I do it all the time too. So now you're going to do, yeah, making any worksheets you need, whether it's rubrics and the assessment, peer feedback forms, um, uh, artist statement templates, whatever you need to make, you got to make them. And then um, any examples, if you want to have examples of the art projects, you got to make that too. All right, now number six is that if you're finding yourself short on time or you just need a little bit of support, like some of them you want to plan and some of them you're like, I need to buy myself a little time so I can 
plan the next one. Um, then you can find all this, some pre-done art lessons and art resources all done for you in the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teacher Store by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT or hitting the link in the description of the video to take you to the Ms. Artastic Store on TeachersPayTeachers.com. There you're going to find over 900 different art resources in various themes from elements and of art, principles of design, holidays, and seasonal art lessons and resources. Um, all everything for all the yeah seasons. Um, everything for art subs or art on a cart. Um, you can find all of those in the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. From everything from art projects to complete art units. Even for um, I have grade based art units for the elements of art. So you can find a kindergarten elements of art unit, uh, grade one, grade two, all the way up to grade eight elements of art unit. Each one will be under a different theme, so there's no overlap. Uh, if you teach the kids year after year, it'll feel completely different because they're in completely different themes. Like kindergarten's like animals, and then it's like insects for grade one, and then I think grade three is like reptiles or grade four or something like that, and then grade five is space. And then by grade six, seven, eight, they're doing like the um, sorry, time, and then light versus dark, and those kinds of more in-depth themes. Um, I also have um, so I have lesson plan, sorry, art units and art lesson plans for art works, so just art projects. Uh, I have art and rights, craft and rights. I have grid draws, both cartoon style, but also value image, um, black and white images. I have all kinds of things. What else do I have? Oh yeah. I have art challenge cards, digital art resources, I have um, my directed draws, I have write and draws for all the seasons and holidays, and so much more. I literally, maybe even by the time you're watching this, I have over a thousand resources. That is over a decade worth of work, obviously. <laughs> so check it out, Ms. Artastic on TPT. Um, or if you're wanting a lot more and you're wanting a complete curriculum, then I suggest enrolling in the Artastic Collective Art Curriculum Membership. That is my um, art curriculum at artasticcollective.com. And there you're going to get new bundles of art lessons added to your membership every month for elements of art, principles of design, ceramics and sculpture, uh, holidays and seasons, artists and art history, and so much more. So if you want a more, and it also of course includes an art teacher growth course to help you plan your year from back to school all the way to the end of the year um, using my art teacher growth course, I'll walk you through how to make your scope and sequence, your lesson plans, how to plan your back to school, how to plan your first week, and again, all the way through the year, help you with classroom management, help you with planning um, until the end of the year, and I'll help you plan that as well, plus give you all the resources and templates to do it. So if you're looking for a more comprehensive um, resource, I highly recommend the most affordable plan would be to get the Artastic Collective Art Curriculum and you can find the link to that as well in the description of the video. The next enrollment is in January so I highly recommend that you hit that link and get on the waitlist now because I only take in so many uh, new members and then and I also only open it for five short days for enrollment um, just so that way I can make sure I can help new members and walk them through the membership and get started um, and then give them that time that they deserve. So if you're looking for a more comprehensive resource and you want to get on the, the wait list for your Tastic Collective Art Curriculum, make sure you hit the link in the description of the video. All right, my friend, that is it for this episode. My question for you is, um, what questions do you have about planning the year or lesson planning? Please let me know in the comments of the video and I will see you in the next episode, which is what art lessons to teach in autumn. If you're looking for some autumn ideas or art lessons to teach in autumn, hit the link in the above me here, the click the link above me or in the description of the video and I'll see you in that episode. Please make sure you like this video to help it get seen on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. I am trying to get to one, sorry, 10,000 and then 100,000 subscribers. It is my absolute dream. It was just my birthday. Help me make my dream come true. My birthday was on the 9th. Ha ha ha, I'm so much older. It's sad, it's sad when you get older now for me. For me, that's my feelings. I, I, I wish I was the person who was like, yes, it's my birthday. I don't know why I don't feel like <laughs> Anyways, a great present to help me get uplifted would be just to subscribe to my channel. I'm cool with that, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.